Hey, what is going on everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you all are having a wonderful and fantastic day today, and if not, hopefully you all will have a better tomorrow. So as many of you already know, Terry Bogard was going to be coming to Smash. He was a DLC character, it was confirmed a part of the DLC content, and of course, Terry has come from Fatal Fury. So, you know, longtime Fatal Fury fans are very happy to see Terry come into Smash. They've been excited for this since the announcement. And, you know, it also got a lot of Fatal Fury fans really excited because they thought, well, if Terry was going to be in the game, there could be the potential hope for the future that maybe more characters from Fatal Fury could actually come into the series. And a specific fan favorite might be in the series. Yeah, not so much, unfortunately. We'll get to who that fan favorite is in a minute. So this article had to say, Terry Bogard is live in Super Smash Bros., but you won't see this Fatal Fury character. Now, who could they be talking about? Oh, I don't know. My Shiranui. So we go down to the article here, and the first half of it is then talking about Terry, but the thing is, it's been confirmed that my, unfortunately, despite how many fans, myself included, would love to see her be in the series, yeah, she's not going to make it into Smash. And there's a couple of reasons why this is, but if you take a look at the character design of Mai, I don't realistically see any issues here at all. Personal opinion. And, you know, many people do like her design, myself included, but, yeah, seems that some people have an issue with this design. And this is a design that, you know, she's had since Fatal Fury, you know, long time running. Oh, you know, those Puritans, man, those Puritans. We're going to get to them in just a moment, but... Let's take a little look further into this article and see what it had to say about this entire situation. So, here's what I had to say. But there's one Fatal Fury character you won't be seeing, and that's my Shiranui. Yeah, real sad. I'm glad to see Terry, though. I am. I really enjoy his character. I'm glad to see him. Would have been great to also have Mai, though, but, you know, I'm just saying personal opinion. While fighting in the King of Fighters Stadium, you'll see characters from Fatal Fury and the King of Fighters appear just outside the ring. There are 20 cameo characters in all, but there is one glaring omission from the cameo lineup. My Shiranui is not a cameo character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh, sad. She doesn't even get a cameo. They can't even at least put her face on her banner or something. Kind of sad, really. Kind of sad. So, continuing forward. During the stream, Masahiro Sakurai revealed that Mai Shiranui would not appear in the game. The reason he gave is interesting, to say the least. According to Sakurai, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is for good boys and girls of many different ages. So we decided not to feature her. Please forgive us. <laughs> That's actually uh, him throwing shade a little bit. I'll get into that in a moment also. If you're not already aware, Mai Shiranui is one of the most recognizable female video game characters around. She also happens to wear a costume that reveals quite a bit of her body, and her fighting style features a lot of bend over in front of the camera moves. Apparently, Mai Shiranui was deemed to be a bit too sexy for Nintendo's typically family-friendly version. Despite the fact that, I don't know, Smash used to be T. Anybody remember Melee? I remember when it was T for Teen. I don't know if anybody else does, but I remember. Pepperidge Farm remembers. But, uh, so, here's a tweet that they had to point out from the article here. Is, uh, one person had to say, Me learning about KOF. Who is my Shiranui, and why is she not a guest care? Oh. <laughs> you know, just, yeah, it's unfortunate. But, hey, you know, the Puritans over Reset Era. Yeah, we talked about them before. I'm sure many of you know of, uh, things about Reset Era. They had to bring this up, and man, they are praising high heaven right now over the fact that Mai is not in the game. They're over there praising high heaven over the fact that Mai is not going to be in Smash at all. They're so happy over it. Them trying to push their colonial Puritan beliefs on the Japanese culture. Yeah, so much for respecting other people's culture, right? Oh, these guys are such hypocrites. All these Puritans are hypocrites. But anyways, so let's go ahead and look at what some of these comments had to say because <laughs> they get a bit spicy. The good boys and girls joke was 
edited by the localization team. As the original Japanese stream, Sakurai elaborates that including Mai would have raised the game's rating. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of funny. You would think that the DLC would not actually affect the game's rating, but, you know, it does. And with Mai's reveal, it would affect things, apparently. So now as you scroll down, you'll start to see the comments. You'll start to see where they get kind of, eh. <laughs> you know, these Puritans start praising things, start throwing things out there. So you'll actually really start to see it. So let's start with one really noticeable one right here. Nothing of value was lost. Well, actually, I'd say a very popular character was potentially lost had they decided whether they were going to put him in. Even a cameo would have been fine. I don't see why a cameo would have hurt anything, but, you know, personal opinion. It means those weebs thirsty for my are bad boys and girls. Did you ever think that some people just like a character? It's, you know, not about a person being thirsty. Just saying. But apparently they like to immediately just, you know, sexualize the character. They like to immediately look at the character as if they're a big chunk of meat and think that people just like characters because of their looks. I mean, looks are one thing. Character design. People like character designs. Sometimes people get reeled in by a character design. But you got to take into accordance the fact that people may also just like their characteristics and personality also. It's not just about the character design. You know, I'm just saying. But, of course, they got to throw it at the character design because they got to say that, you know, it's too much for me, ah! You know, and then, of course, you know, there's references here of people saying, I mean, and then, of course, the jiggling, you know. That's another reference that they like to throw out there. And, you know, personally... I don't see anything wrong with the design. As I've stated, I don't think there's anything wrong with the design. In fact, you know, these people, of course, just like to throw their Puritan values all over games. And, you know, they have big influences on games. They do. Reset Era is a place that really influences the Western gaming industry. And it can be really bad. I mean, it really is. I mean, you want to talk about censorships. So these are the people that support censorship. These are people that support these things, like buy not being put into games, and then they ask for more of it in other games as well. It gets really bad. Here's another statement here. Trash design doesn't get in the game. Oh, well. You know, that's the thing. I like Mai's design. In fact, in Soul Calibur VI, I actually made a character based off of Mai. You know, personal little fact about me there. I did do that. Did it a while ago, actually. But hey, Reset Arrow wouldn't be complete if we didn't have the whole... Hashtag representation for smash. Yeah, this person raises their ugly little head lurking around yet again, and this is what they had to say. An argument can be made about Sakurai and Nintendo's failings regarding women in Smash. Only four of the 20 cameo characters in the KOF stage are women. But Mai is on another level when it comes to sexualization. In her specific case, I can understand why Mai was left out. You know, it's funny. This is the very person that wrote a letter to Sakurai, which I made a video on, stating that they thought that there needed to be more representation for female characters as well as POCs. But yet, you say Mai should be left out. Is that really representation for women, then? I, it, it sounds a bit hypocritical because of the character design. Really? That's your reason for wanting her to be kept out? I thought you wanted representation for women. I thought you were advocating for that. Oh, I guess not. I guess uh, if it doesn't fit your colonial Puritan beliefs, nope. Guess not. Not gonna lie, that last Sakurai quote is a bit problematical, that word. It's been discussed in the past. <laughs> More like hashtag hypocrisy for Smash is what you should actually be having your hashtag banner there for. Just saying. <laughs> oh, and this person had to point this out. This person actually got a warning for their statement. Okay, this is what this person had to say. This can't see too much thigh zero nonsense. Strikes a weird Victorian puritanical BS. It's kind of creepy, to be honest, and doesn't make any sense. And you have Guy standing there with his entire top off. That's true. You know, it's funny that... Smash would just try to throw out 
my when of course they have characters like you know geese in the background who is just a cameo his character just having his complete top off you have shulk who is just topless you know and then of course you have zero suit samus who also has a bit of a fan service flair going on and you know which going to the next point this person had to bring this up she would have shown just as much skin as zero suit samus's alternate costumes do i think sakurai just wanted to not bother with zero at all and ruled her out from the start also i think dlc has to have the same rating as the base game wouldn't make sense to me if that wasn't the case and now that's probably true now while the fact is yeah you have a alternate costume for samus and for shulk both that are fan service looks and you know nothing wrong with that i enjoy fan service and, you know, had they actually had a plan for Mai in the future, you know, I don't know. If they did have a plan, then they did, but, you know, of course, now that's out the window. But had they had a plan, I don't see any reason why they would have just taken her out if there was actually a plan for her character. I mean, of course, they didn't want to have to deal with Zero and the whole rating of the game changing and all that kind of stuff. But still, I don't think that that should have been a reason to throw her out of the game, personal opinion, but that's just what I think. Now, of course... There's another person here, and they had a big statement here, and here's what they had to say. This my situation seems to be an inverse of the Tifa one. The changes made to Tifa were pragmatic and necessary, because it was the developers emphasizing the importance of the character beyond her physical appearance. If anyone was following her appearances beyond the original game, they would have already seen this course correction take shape. From Advent Children to Kingdom Hearts and onward, Square Enix wisely acknowledged that Tifa's main traits and appeals as a character go beyond her physical appearance, and they struck a perfect balance. In my opinion, the angry gamer crowd, as loud and obnoxious as they're being, represent an extremely small minority in the grand scheme of things. Oh, <laughs> you think that. <laughs> you think that. With the decision to leave Mai out of Smash, it feels like the exact opposite sentiment. It's an open acknowledgement that Mai's jiggling jubies <laughs> are the defining traits of the character and to scale back that sexiness. Even a little to me, Zero practices would have gotten more angry responses from fans than placating them. Basically, I'd rather have nothing. Correct me if I'm wrong. With respect to anyone who legitimately likes the character beyond her appearance, it's always luck to me that Mai truly is a character marketed for the massive bouncing chest and flirtatious demeanor, with no other defining character traits. Even her consistent story motivation seems to be nothing more than wanting Andy to crush her. God. Subsequent appearances just seem to pile on the TNA more and more, which makes her a really unique outlier where other characters like Lara Croft scaled back from the fan service marketing. Basically, Mai is a borderline anti character, and SNK and the fan base seem perfectly content with that. It's honestly not a surprise that all they could make her work in Smash, even as a cameo. You know, I don't think these people understand how Smash works. You know, the point is to get more people, you know, into other games as well that are in Smash. And of course, the characters that are in Smash are also fan service as well, of course. But, <laughs> you know, it's like they think that my being in the game would be a very terrible thing. And, you know... I think a lot of people would be really interested also in Fatal Fury had they seen Mai as well. You know, of course, Terry can get them invested into that game too, had they not been a fan before. I mean, and I'm sure he probably will as a character. You know, it's a possibility. But at the same time, you know, these people are the same people who say that they want to see, you know, people of color or women be represented more. But then, of course, here they go. They attack over Mai's design. And now they're pleased because she's not going to be in the game. So, you know... They're excited, they're happy about that, and they think that Mai is problematic. Oh, God, I hate that word. But, you know, this is how it is. They are hypocrites because they have to try to force their colonial Puritan beliefs onto another culture, 
And they always think that, you know, this is the right way. We need to censor things. We need to push things out there and replace them with our beliefs. That's what they think. They want to push their colonial Puritan beliefs on Japan, and they want to censor everything they can. And, you know, they, of course, blame the actual fans or the ones who actually support it when these people they don't support it at all they just complain to complain and you know they body shame of course they're looking at my saying that her chest is the reason you know yeah you know good job body shaming you bigots because <laughs> that's what they're doing they are body shaming you know and they're not accepting a great design you know they're making fun of her design even i mean you know these people are hypocrites they want to push their colonial puritanism on japan and they don't mind body shaming if it doesn't suit their beliefs such hypocrisy but anyways let me know what you think about this entire situation down below and share the video let's try to spread the word and get it out there it's greatly appreciated and it really helps out the channel a lot but anyways thank you all for watching i hope you all enjoyed and if you did enjoy hit the video with a like subscribe if you want to see more content like this and follow me on discord the link is in the description down below but anyways i hope you all have yourselves a wonderful and fantastic day today and remember if today was not a good day tomorrow could always be better take care of yourselves and everyone around you and have yourselves a good one out there everybody